Hello and welcome to our online service here at Frinton Gospel Chapel. We're so glad that you can join with us today and we hope that you feel a real part of God's family. Now we're excited to share with you that starting this Thursday, the 16th of July at 7.30pm, we're able to resume our weekly prayer meetings at the Gospel Chapel. We're able to join together to pray by taking all the precautions necessary and following the guidance given to keep everyone as safe as possible. And this is the first step in moving forward and we'll keep you informed about the return of Sunday services in due course. Now I'll read Psalm 100 to you. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Now let's spend a little bit of time in worship. Darkness. 
Good morning, church family, again. It's another strange one, isn't it, meeting like this? But we just pray that you will be blessed as we go through the service this morning. One of the things that I have found so much a blessing in lockdown has been listening to a lot more Christian music. And recently I came across a verse that was sung. I don't know the whole thing, but I'm going to read you the verse. And I'm going to base my prayer really on this verse. And it goes like this. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. And I'm going to ask you to do what we would normally have done if we were in church. And that is to close your eyes now, please, as we pray. Father God, we thank you that once again we are able to come to you, our Heavenly Father, the one who holds the world in his hands and who cares that we speak to him. And Father, we just pray this morning that you will hear our prayers as we just ask you to come and be with us each one at this time. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We bless your name because you are so holy, and yet you care so much for each one of us, that you know our name. Lord, I thank you that you know my name and the names of all these lovely friends who are listening in this morning. Lord, I pray that you will just be with us each one. We thank you for all your love, your care, your blessing. And we confess, Lord, so so many times we forget you. So many times we leave you out of our decisions. So many times we doubt that perhaps you're even able to answer our prayers. Lord, we ask that you will forgive us for those times when we doubt. Forgive us for those times when life seems hard and we almost want to just opt out of thinking about you because we can't we can't seem to bring ourselves to trust you enough lord forgive us for that help us only in this day to remember that you are a holy trustworthy god and we can ask you for anything and you will hear us we thank you lord for each other we pray that you will be with those who are in special need today. We ask that you will just grant healing to those who are sick, that those people who have been unwell for so long, Lord, be with them in their pain, be with them in their suffering. And Lord, if it is your will, will you heal them? We thank you for our young ones, for the children, each one of them. We pray your blessing upon them, Lord, each one. We pray for those who are awaiting the births of babies, that you will keep them safe and that you will protect them, Lord, and that they will know that you are lovingly caring for them. And we just thank you this morning that you hear us and that you love us enough. We pray for those who are still working in the care sector, in whichever way they're doing it. Lord, I ask that you will just be with them today. And I thank you that as we close, Lord, you will just be with us each one and that you will just grant your presence, your power, your protection and your Holy Spirit to just move amongst us now. In Jesus' name, amen. We come again to remember the Lord Jesus in the way that he instructed his disciples to do. And I'll read from Corinthians chapter 11. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this 
whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. You might think that it is uh, just for those 12 disciples at the time at the Last Supper. But if you believe on him and seek to do to honour him uh, as the Lord of your life, you are a disciple. So please share with us at home. You may not yet have made that commitment, but today could be a time when you do it right now. Sometimes people say doing the same thing every week is boring. Doing it on screen like this, taking five minutes when we normally take an hour, can become a routine, just a slot in the programme if we don't make a real effort to engage our minds. But also the Bible says that we should prepare ourselves beforehand. We should examine ourselves, in, again in Corinthians chapter 11. Have we acted honourably during the week? We may need to put things right in confession to the Lord. Having got it wrong does not mean that we should hold back. Coming in true repentance, the Lord is always ready to forgive. Jesus specialises in forgiveness. Did he not go all the way to the cross uh, to forgive our sins? Let us now bring Jesus into focus. Let us appreciate who he is, Son of God, who put aside his majesty to come to earth, to live a life as we do, to be rejected, to suffer an awful death, and to take the sin of the whole world. To take my sin, to cover me with his righteousness, to make me fit to stand before a righteous God. He came, we come this morning, to express our thanks from the bottom of our hearts. The important point I want to make is this morning that we must make our personal response, listening to the prompting of the Spirit. I find the words of this old hymn helpful to uh, focus on what we're doing. Speak, Lord, in the stillness, while I wait on thee, hush my heart to listen in expectancy. Speak, O blessed Master, in this quiet hour. Let me see thy face, Lord. Feel thy touch of power. We pray as we prepare to take the bread. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you have done for us in obedience to your Father God. We remember the untold cost of our salvation, bringing us back to God. We take the bread together, remembering your sacrificial love. We share the bread together now. reading from Ephesians chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ, for he chose him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestinated us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he free, has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of God's grace 
that he has lavished on us. Just a prayer before we take the bread now, to the wine, sorry. Lord, we are so thankful of what you have done for us in giving your life blood in redeeming sacrifice for us. Not only that, but we also remember your promise to return again for us. We do this until you come. We take the wine together now. I conclude with the, the words of another old hymn. When he comes, our glorious King, all his ransoms home to bring. Then anew this song we'll sing. Hallelujah. What a Saviour. Amen. going to learn the story about Esther and we're going to do a craft with you and I hope you really enjoy it. The Brave Queen. Esther was Jewish, that means she was an Israelite. She lived in the land of Persia with her oldest cousin Mordecai. The King of Persia needed a new queen. He announced, bring me the most beautiful women from all over the kingdom. Esther was one of the women sent to the palace. When the king met Esther, he chose her to be his queen. Haman was the king's chief helper. He hated the Jewish people. They were God's people. Haman wanted everyone to, to bow down to him. One day, Mordecai... Mordecai refused to bow down to Haman. Mordecai would only bow down to God. Haman went to the king. He said, the Jews are bad people. You should sign a law that will help me get rid of them. So the king signed the new law. God's people were in great danger. Mordecai heard about the new law. He ran to tell Esther. You must save yourself, so save yourself and the rest of God's people. Perhaps God has made you the queen for this reason. So Esther came up with a plan. It would be very ris risky for her. Esther invited the king and Haman to a special dinner. Then she asked the king, why does Haman want to get rid of me? The king was surprised. She said, I am Jewish. Haman tricked you into signing a new law that would get rid of all the Jews. The king told his guards, arrest Haman. Then he made Mordecai his new chief helper. He told, the queen, he told queen Esther, I will make a new law that will keep you and your people safe. God used Esther to save his people. Esther prayed to God to help her to be brave and to come up with a plan to save the Jewish people and herself. So um, it's really important that we pray to God. Sometimes it's difficult to always know what to pray for and what to say. So Hannah's going to show you a prayer pyramid that can give ideas of what to pray for if you're struggling a little bit. So there's four sides to this pyramid and they say different things. So we've got praise, sorry, please and thank you. Um, and Hannah's going to show you how you can make one of these. So today we're going to learn how to make one of these and it's really simple. So you get, you're going to make a template which is one of these and 
going to draw a triangle, massive one or a little one, like one of these that I've made. They're really teeny, they were my first try. And then you're going to draw a teeny little line and then a long line, then a teeny little line and then repeat, repeat on the first one and then this one, then at the bottom do that, miss one, then do one of them and then you've missed one. And going to do four sections in the triangle, one, two, three, four. And then what you do next, you get one of these and you colour them in, in any sort of colour you want. You can use crayons, pencils or pens and just colour them in, in there. You can only use four colours and then you've got to put please, sorry, thank you and praise. So um, after you um, coloured it all in, you put the words, but you put the words in, but you don't have to put them exactly where I've put them. You can put them anywhere. And then after you've coloured it all in, put the words in, you fold, you fold in on these edges, lines, I mean, lines, and make sure you put the lines on this one, on the, what's it called? Tabs, on the tabs. And um, then once you've done that, you get the glue, get the glue and glue it, but you don't have to use a glue you can use sellotape if you want fold it again and then you put it on the edges so um once you've folded it and glued it glued it i've already threw it and it's landed on sorry so you've got to think of something that is about sorry and you can ha have some help by your parents if you need some help you can do it on the table or floor and um and make sure it doesn't get wet either way if you throw it in the water it's not good because it's paper sorry i am sorry that i haven't been that nice to my parents this week something like that we hope that you enjoy making and using your prayer pyramids and we just really hope that you have a really good week and we yeah. hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye. Hey Noah, you've lost it matey. Building a boat on dry land with no water for miles around. Ha <laughs> ha, Noah, God's going to flood the earth, is he? You need to get your head examined. What a joke, Noah. Always thought you were a bit strange. Been hearing voices again, have you? It's difficult sometimes, isn't it, to walk the path that God has set out for us, especially when it means walking against the tide of public opinion that is largely not in tune with the mind of God. I'm sure as Christians, we have all at some point experienced that feeling of being alone and isolated because the position or the stance that we've adopted in Christ has not been in tune with those around us. Whether that be at work or in our friendship group or even at home in our family environment. It takes courage and boldness to stand by what you believe when it flies in the face of the opinions of the world around us. It can mean having to face ridicule and insults, anger, prejudice, people talking behind your back and being marginalised by those around us, even those we might have thought of as our friends. I'm sure Noah went through all these experiences when he was asked by God to build the ark, a boat to house him and his family and the animals that God wanted to save when he came in judgment by flooding the earth because of the depravity and the wickedness it had fallen into. Let's read a few verses, shall we, from Genesis chapter 6. It says from verse 9 onwards, This is the account of Noah 
and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below a roof as an opening of one cubit. Put a door on the side of the ark and make lower and middle and upper decks. I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are going to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. And Noah did everything just as God commanded him. And then one verse from Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. As we read the Bible, it tells us Noah was a righteous man. He was blameless among the people of his time and he walked faithfully with God. So before even starting to build the ark, Noah stuck out like a sore thumb in a godless society in which he and his family lived in. That in itself would have been enough to draw ridicule and insult as his godly lifestyle exposed the deeds of those around him. Jesus himself said in John 3 verse 20 to highlight this, for everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. Jesus himself was living proof of this. As God, he came to earth as a man to show the world how much he loved us and wanted to be in relationship with us. He healed the sick. He provided food for the hungry. He spoke amazing words of wisdom and life. He challenged injustice and oppression. He forgave sins yet ended up being crucified by those whose evil deeds he has exposed. Even the Roman centurion guarding Jesus' cross had to admit, surely this man was the Son of God. It can be tough trying to live out a godly life in a world that rejects God. So what are the lessons that we can learn from the story of Noah that helps us to offer ourselves, as it says in Romans chapter 12, that helps us to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, and not to conform to the pattern of this world. Firstly, again, let's highlight that verse in Genesis chapter 6, that Noah was a righteous man. He was blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. I think that's the key. He walked faithfully with God. Noah's faithfulness was his grounding in God. He didn't just talk the talk, but he walked the walk. For him, believing in God was a lifestyle, something that he lived out with God on a daily basis. This kept him close to God. And when you live close to God, you have a lot more chance of hearing what God is saying to you. Going back again to that verse in Romans chapter 12, if we keep in view the mercy of God in our lives, 
We will not conform to what is trending in the world around us, but we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And therefore, then we will be able to attest and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and his perfect will. Because Noah walked daily with God, when God called him to do something which from a human standpoint seemed crazy, he didn't question it, but trusted God and got on with the job despite the flack and the ridicule and the opposition that he was going to get over the next 120 years. Yes, 120 years while he was building the ark and warning the people what God was going to do. If we're going to be faithful like Noah, we must expect opposition. Jesus again said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Noah never lost sight of the end from the beginning. There was salvation in the ark for all those who chose to take up God's offer of mercy. Today we may have trouble. We may go through periods of ridicule. We may go through periods of being marginalised as a Christian. Maybe even periods of persecution but we must never lose sight of the end game. Ultimately, God has overcome the world. He has overcome sin. He has overcome Satan. He has overcome death. And in his time, he will draw it all to a close. And through Jesus' death and resurrection, he promises that we will find salvation. Until such a time, we must, like Noah, walk by faith and not by sight. What we experience now is temporary. What is to come through the promises of God will be permanent and eternal. As it says in 2 Corinthians 4 verses 17 to 18, for our light and momentary affliction is producing for us an eternal glory that is far beyond comparison, so that we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So God, so Noah walked with God, therefore he heard God, then he obeyed God. It's one thing to hear God, it's another thing to do what he asks. In Genesis 6 verse 22 it says, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. There was once a missionary called Gladys Aylward. She was a missionary to China. And during the 1930s, as a young woman, she left her home in England and sailed to China. Here she opened a home for orphan children who'd been left to starve or wander the streets. And when the Japanese invaded China, Gladys was forced to flee. With only one assistant for 12 days, she led more than 100 orphans over the mountains towards freedom. In the face of extreme difficulty and danger, She devoted her life to becoming a mother to each of those children. Years later, when she was publicly honoured, she explained her amazing work like this. She said, I did not choose this. I was led into it by God. I'm not really more interested in children than I am in other people, but God gave me to understand this is what he wanted me to do, so I did it. I'm sure like Gladys Aylward, Noah wouldn't have chosen to spend 120 years building an ark and suffering all that ridicule that must have come his way on a daily basis. But he did it because it was what God wanted him to do, and he did it without question. Francis Dixon once wrote, The work of faith is to obey the voice of God, however contrary to human reason it may seem to be. Who'd ever heard of an ark, or a flood for that matter? Surely there must be some mistake. No, God had said it. The work of faith is to accept and act upon God's revelation, however contrary to human reason it may appear to be. It is said of Billy Graham that in his young days, that one day he was out walking and he came across a monument where he got down on his knees and he started to pray. He said, Lord, I do not understand all that is in this book. And there are a lot of different passages that I have my doubts about, but you say it's your word. So by faith, I'm going to accept it as my authority 
and live it out. That prayer proved to be the turning point of his life. And from that moment on, God began to use him in amazing ways. The knock-on effects are huge when we are obedient to the call of God. From one simple prayer that Billy Graham prayed, that prayer of commitment of obedience, millions of people around the world heard the good news of Jesus Christ and were given the opportunity to avoid the ultimate judgment of God and receive eternal life in his kingdom. Unfortunately, Noah did not get the same response as Billy Graham and only eight were saved in the ark when the floods of God's judgment came. But he was faithful in obeying God's call and as a result, humanity survived and were given another chance to be fruitful and multiply on the earth, which was the original plan of God in creation. And so the story of Noah goes on and we haven't got time this morning to unpack everything that is here. We could talk about how he did the will of God. We could talk about how he did it in the the face of opposition and discouragement. How he didn't question the justice and the judgment of God. How he didn't shrink back from warning people what was to come if they didn't take God's offer of salvation in the ark. How he reaped the rewards of listening and obeying God. But my prayer this morning is this, that like Noah, everyone listening will take up God's offer of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, while we have the chance. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I pray that in this belief may also be backed up with a daily walk with God, being faithful and obedient to his call in our lives, whatever that may be, and wherever that may lead us. Amen. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for these characters you give us in your word that serve as examples to us and that we can learn from. Help us this morning to learn from the story of Noah that through the power of the Holy Spirit we will be people who listen to you and walk close to you. May we not shrink back from what you call us to do even in the face of opposition, but give us the boldness to stay faithful to you. We thank you that you have given us the opportunity of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, and do not treat us as our sins deserve. My prayer this morning, Lord, is that everyone listening will turn to you and accept your offer of forgiveness and salvation so that they will find themselves safe and secure in your kingdom forever, for eternity just as Noah and his family were in the ark. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all this week. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. is enough more than I need at your word I will believe I wait for you draw near again let your spirit make me new and I Will fall at your 
and I will fall For joining us today and we hope that you'll join us again next week. Just a reminder this Thursday the 16th of July at 7 30 p.m there is a um, prayer meeting at Frinton Gospel Chapel and you are welcome to join us there. Let's pray before we go. Father God thank you for the message you've shared with us today. Thank you for making your presence known to us and thank you that your love surrounds us and keeps us. Father, I just pray that we would be able to make Jesus' love known to other people this week. I pray that you'll protect us and keep us safe. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. We look forward to seeing you next week online. Welcome to news about Frinton Mission 2020. It won't come as a surprise to you that FM will not go ahead in the usual way this year due to COVID-19. However, all is not lost. We are preparing for FM online during the first week of August this year. All the children's groups and the teenagers groups will still have some of their usual fun and games and Bible teaching only instead of the usual venue, everything will be accessible via the FM website. There will not be a marquee this year, but the daily talks from the marquee speaker will still be broadcast via our website. The only problem is you have to bring your own tea and cake and coffee. If you have any spare cake, just drop it down to my house, will you? The Lifeline teaching for adults will also be available online. Plus, each of our local Frinton area churches together ministers will prepare a thought for the day each day. We're even planning to hold our famous FM quiz night online. Do look out for that. So then, the FM week will look something like this. Sunday the 2nd of August and Sunday the 9th of August, we will hold our opening and closing celebration services available online from 4pm. Monday the 3rd to Friday the 7th of August, the children's and youth groups, that's Bite Size, Sound Bites, Megabytes, Crash and Download, Download, will broadcast their own morning sessions available from 9am each day. And for groups that have an afternoon session, they will be available at 2pm. Check out the appropriate age uh, age groups page on our website for more details. It's frintonmission.net. And tell other people about it. We have no limit on numbers this year. Isn't that great? From 9am each day 
The thought for the day will be online and again at 9am each day, both the Lifeline Teaching for Adults will be available and the Marquee Speaker will be talking on a very topical subject. That means you can watch both of them, one after the other if you want to. We're still working on what encounter the evening worship time might be able to provide. Saturday evening, the 8th of August, will probably be our FM quiz night. More details will be posted on the website in the coming weeks about all these different things, so look out for that. So FM Online 2020, it's going to be another great year. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.